Hey everyone, welcome to Science Friday with Miss LaPierre. Today we are going to be continuing talking about plants and specifically we are going to talk about how stems and roots help plants grow. First, let's talk about roots. What is the purpose of roots in a plant? I think that a lot of us already know that roots are what the plant uses to suck up water, which it needs to live and grow, but roots are also responsible for keeping plants stable. While they are usually underground, they don't always have to be. There are a couple plants where the roots are above ground, like this really cool tree here. Roots can also store food that was made in the plant's leaves in a process called what? We learned it last week. It's called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is when plants take energy from the sun and carbon dioxide and they and then they let out oxygen and they create food for themselves. So some of that food ends up getting stored in the roots. Roots have way more function than just sucking up water and nutrients from the ground. They are also responsible for keeping the plant stable and storing food. Water and minerals that the plants suck up from the ground are called nutrients. And nutrients are any material that is needed by a living thing for energy, growth, and repair. Any living thing needs nutrients to grow and be healthy. The types of nutrients that these things need varies based on what they are. We as humans need different kinds of nutrients than plants need. There are two kinds of roots that plants usually have. Number one is called a taproot. And a taproot is one big long root. An example of this would be a carrot or a dandelion. It's just one single root that goes into the ground. The other kind of root is called a fibrous root, and these roots spread out in many directions. An example of this would be grass or a cacti. But what about stems? Stems are responsible for supporting the leaves, flowers, and fruits of plants. They also grow up towards the light, which helps these plants get access to their main energy source because the sun is their main source of energy. The stems also have tubes that move the water to and from the roots and leaves. So the water can travel up from the roots through the stem to the leaves and the nutrients can go from the leaves down the stem back into the roots. So all of the different parts of the plants are very important and they're all connected. When we think about different kinds of roots, we know that some of them are thin and they go on the ground, such as pumpkins, but there's also vines, which grow parts that wrap around objects to support the plant. I always think that vines look really pretty on buildings. Some stems grow underground and some grow above ground. A cactus is an example of a plant whose stem grows above ground. Their stems grow very thick and they can swell up to store water. As the cactus uses stored water due to the heat of the desert, the stems shrink. Cactus stems are thick and waxy, which helps them from losing water. Cactus's stems are essential to help them survive in the desert. Parts of some stems grow below ground. An example of this would be a potato. When we're eating a potato, we're actually eating part of the stem. The potato makes new stems from buds, which we call the eyes of the potato. So that's really it about roots and stems. As you can tell, they are both super important for keeping plants alive, just like the leaves are. And this week, we are going to be doing an experiment where we are going to watch roots grow. Now, option number one, I am going to link to another video that's going to show you how you can make a bean plant grow roots. If you are feeling a bit more adventurous, then stay tuned because I'm going to talk about how you can do something called propagation, which is when you take a plant that already exists and you grow a new plant from it. Let's go propagate a plant. The most important thing that you are going to need for this to work is a plant to propagate. And in this case, I'm using a golden pothos plant. So if you do not have one of those, um, this video is not for you, but if you want to get one, they're actually one of the easiest plants that you could get to take care of, and they're not too expensive either. I actually got my first pothos at a grocery store, 
so I feel like they're pretty easily accessible but yeah so basically once you have your pothos what you are going to do is you are going to look for something called the node the node is basically right where two stems meet you'll see something poking out where they meet and so that is the node and what you're going to do is you're going to take a pair of scissors and you are going to cut right under the node and you are going to do this for um as many leaves as you want i am doing about four or five normally i do about 10 at a time once you have cut all of your propagations you are going to jar of filtered water. It can also be distilled water um, or even tap water if you have clean tap water where you live. You're going to just place them in the water making sure that the nodes are completely submerged. Now you wait. As time goes on you'll notice that slowly but surely your propagations will grow roots. And I usually let mine grow for quite a while, so by the time I am ready to actually plant them, um, they have super long roots, longer than is needed. Normally, you only need to have them be about one inch long when you plant them. And also, you don't have to even plant them if you don't want to. They could just stay in water for as long as you want. But I like to plant mine, and I'm going to show you how I plant mine. So obviously you need the propagations, you're going to need a pot to actually plant the propagations in. Make sure that you have one that has a drain hole. You're going to need water, and of course you're going to need good potting soil. If you've let your roots get really long, you're also going to need scissors to trim them down a bit. You don't have to do that, it just makes it easier to plant. To start the process, you are going to fill your pot with soil. You're going to fill it pretty good, I'd say like three-fourths of the way full. And then once it's full, you're going to give it a nice pat. And you are going to make a hole in the dirt, which is where the propagations will go. Then you are going to soak your soil. And you're going to make it like really wet because the propagations are used to water right now. They're not used to living in just soil. So we like to start them out in a really wet environment so that they can easily adjust. Next, you're actually going to take a propagation cutting and trim the roots if you have to. I usually make mine about one inch thick and you're just going to stick it in the hole that you created. And you're going to go ahead and do this for all of the cuttings that you have. Once all of them are in there, you are going to add another layer of soil, pat it down, make sure that all of the propagations are planted in there nice. And then to finish it off, you're just going to add a bit more water. Remember, they need a lot of water at the beginning. And there you go. And then slowly but surely, your propagations will grow. All of them might not take the first time that you do it. But here's one of mine that I did at the beginning of the summer of 2020 and she is growing super nice now. She actually grew a couple of new leaves since I first planted her and eventually you hope that your plant will grow to an adult plant and you can even propagate that one and you kind of just get like infinite new plants. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something about how roots stems help plants grow and I hope you have fun either growing a bean plant or propagating your own plant. Have an amazing day! Bye!